Okay, I don't think we have a huge agenda tonight, so maybe we can get out early if we're lucky <laughs> before the snow starts. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to jump right in. That's all right with everyone. That works for me. Um, the Mathis property, property 37. Um, I was not able to attend, but Eric and Dan attended the Board of Selectmen meeting. I guess that was on April 29th, and that was signed and approved. So that has moved forward. So we can check that off our That's list. Um, I'm not sure what number 38 is. Is that that's the other method? That's the road. That's the road. So is that just uh, pl I mean, is there anything that we need to act on there? Well, we we uh, we had Dan's emails about three hours ago. Um, on I don't think that was related to Matthews, which is number 38. So. Oh oh oh, yeah. Well, yes. It, yeah, the um, the invoices. Yeah, he sent invoices and, and uh, oh, I see. plans he did and everything for that. Okay, so he, I see. So those actually should go to Eric. So he's probably yeah. not going to be it ready was, to act on those tonight. It was letters. It just says here the invoices for Boisford, Matthews, and the two Matthews and projects. Yeah. So I'm going to forward this and the deeds. to Eric. And, and uh, he said he sent the deed, the recorded deed, which I think we got before too for Boisvert and for Mathis. And I have um, something, a question to pose to, to Eric about about the Boisvert. Um, when okay, he well, asked, Eric's going to come at 7.30 and we can okay. do uh, financial stuff then. So. Okay. All right. So why don't we save that for when he gets here? Because I think this Matthews, this number 38, is just about um, costs, mm -hmm. like financial stuff. Yep. Okay, well, adding to number 37, that um, at the Bear Paw breakfast, Dan did announce that Nancy is donating that property to Bear Paw. Like, that's confirmed. So. Oh, I didn't catch that. Yeah. I thought he was talking about the 50 acres that she, yeah, did, that she that donated. North Road. Yes, the number 37. Right? Yeah, so she did donate that yes. one. Yeah, I didn't realize that was a done deal. Oh, okay, I see. So yeah, the, yeah. the property will be yeah. deeded to Bear Paw yep. then. Fee. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so that yeah. is done. What's unclear is what's going to happen right, with the right, other right. properties. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I didn't know that there was any anything financial hanging out on the boys for, and there's $18,000 there. And that was not, I did not pick up on that when I went back in time uh -huh. to put together Mm. Uh, what I could find. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't, yeah, I don't know if Eric has information on that or not. Yeah. He said to leave the um, treasure stuff until 7.30 when he gets here. Okay. Uh, okay. Marston Farm. Um, we all reviewed the land management plan. We made comments. Those comments went to to um, Guile Bai and Sean Labrie. Um, Dan and I have a, a meeting set up with Sean and Charlie Moreno to go over the plan in a couple of weeks. And we just got on Charlie's schedule as soon as we could. So mm -hmm. it's still going to be out um, a bit. So that's, the, that, that's just an update. That's where we are on that. What, in a few weeks, did you say? Um, I can find the exact date. Oh, that's date, right. Doesn't but yeah, no. just sometime this, later this month. OK. So yeah, I can report back on that at um, our June meeting. In terms of the 128 acre parcel, we just got from Dan today, um, and I sent it right before the meeting, so most of you probably have not seen it yet, but he sent the um, most current drafts of the conservation easement and ex executory interest deed. So this is for the Pendleton easement. This is the 128 acre parcel that's part of the Marston Farm. This is the parcel that Guile donated as a town forest. Um, we need to review and approve that by our June meeting at the latest. I don't know if people are ready to discuss that tonight or not, or we want to just be prepared to, to, final, to approve that at the next meeting. Is our June meeting too late, or? He says as long as we approve it by the June meeting and... But then does he need board of, 
just yeah so I just need to get on there um, and I'll, I'll do that tomorrow get on their calendar for the next available meeting in June he just wants to close by the end of June yeah whatever work June meeting is fine or you could set like a you know a two-week via email deadline like if anyone has comments or but I guess we all need yeah to no I think we it. should have comments certainly so we should set a date you're right for comments because we um, or if we have any conversation, we need to be having that problem. Or if we want any changes, we right. need to be having that before the next meeting. So I guess the question is, are there any comments that people have at this point? There, there were no changes from the previous ones that were, that were given out for review right. to the ones that he sent today. And I think the idea, at least originally, was that he was going to use our template, which we've seen many times. But in the email that he sent today, he said, um, well, he said, I have made no changes since the last time you saw them. I did not include our usual parking area provision since there is not one in the original LSIP easement. We need to be careful to make the new easement as similar to the LSIP easement as possible. I'm not sure why, but that's what he says. He said, however, I think that you will be able to get approval for an area if you need one. Both LSIP and Bear Paw encourage public access to these types of properties, so I think it's consistent with the current terms of the easements. I still have not received final approval from Paula at LCHIP on the executory interest deed, but we need to have your attorney review it and the CE, the conservation easement, before your June meeting so we can close by the end of the month. That means the Board of Selectmen will need to sign for the closing. So we just need to, uh, yeah, we would get the closing scheduled with the Board of Selectmen sometime after our June meeting. Um, and I will send this to our to town, the town attorney either later tonight or tomorrow for his review. You know, I already know what he's going to say. He's going to say what he says on all of these easements. But anyway, we'll do it for um, dotting I's and crossing T's. What did, I missed what you said. What is he going to say? What he says about all of these easements, which there's, you know, he usually thinks that we're giving too much away. But he's seen our standard template many times. So he says what he says every time, and we still go along. I mean, we still move forward with our standard template. What does he think we're giving away too much of? Mon too much money for the? No, no, no. Uh, he's not. Uh, he's not perhaps as. You know, he's looking out for the interests of the town, not necessarily for the conservation commission. Let's put it that way. I, I can't tell you more than that without going back and looking at his specific, okay, specific that's fine. language. Um, I was just curious. He understands that this is our standard template and this is what we use. He just has to say what he always says because that's his job. I don't think it will change anything about the document at this point. Well, I feel like we've reviewed this, but I'm gonna I'll do another read through and let you know. <laughs> I think we've reviewed I it too. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I'm yeah. not sure that there's really anything yeah. we need to do other than if you want to look at it again, right. feel free, um, and we'll take a. I mean, we could also take a formal vote tonight if people feel they're ready to do that, and then we have it out of the way. I mean, again, it's our standard template. Um, the only thing that's not in there, as he said, is the parking. Yeah, because even the trails language is in there, which means that we updated it with yeah. the most up-to-date template. So, I mean, I guess the only thing is if we do want to wait until town council has reviewed it and we at least see his comments before we make a final approval. Sure. So we could make sure we just get those comments and consider them in case anything new does crop up and then do a final approval on the, at the next meeting. Sure. That sounds you prefer good. that rather than vote a pending approval? It's probably cleaner if we wait for his sure. comments. Okay. Okay, so just Judy for my own, I guess just so I I know what I'm doing. I'm going to send this to Jim Raymond for his um, review. I mean, I think the one thing that I haven't had him review before is this execution executory interest deed so it's p possible that there's something there um, I'll request his feedback within the next two weeks if anyone else decides that they want to read this yet again and has comments let me know by 
two weeks from now and otherwise we will vote on this at our next meeting okay and i will also get on the board of selectmen's meeting for the next available appointment before the end of june And then I think as Judy has noted here, when, if and when we want to deal with the parking issue, we will have to, I think, work with Guile on that to get that, well, just work with her on that, or Sean, should he become the landowner in the, in the meantime. And I'll actually learn more at our meeting with Charlie and Sean about what, you know, what the plans are for for that because it would appear that he's moving forward with management of that parcel and it's so it's unclear to me whether he's already purchased it he's planning to purchase it or guile is just providing him access right. um, you know for this season so I'll know more about the status of that parcel after we meet in a couple of weeks great anything else on Marston no, don't think so. On the Epsom Deerfield project, I haven't heard any more. I mean, it was interesting. We heard, so as Haley mentioned, we were at the Bear Paw fundraiser a couple of weeks ago, and the Epsom chair of their Deerfield Conservation Commission spoke and talked a bit about this property. Um, they're moving forward with their side of the of the parcel. Um, I chatted with her a bit about it. You know, she was, I think, bummed that we're not moving forward, but she understood why. Yeah. And um, Dan has indicated to me that he hasn't, there's been no movement on that front in terms of finding out what the landowner's intentions are. I guess for me, I have some no movement or no contact. Well, that's yeah. a very good question. Because I have some concerns about leaving L chip hanging, yeah. like whether or not it's allowable or not. Like, you know, because I've asked Dan, like, is, does it reflect poorly if we just, you know, keep them in limbo and don't yeah. reject the funding sooner yeah. rather than later? And he says, no, you have until next year to spend the money or whatever. But I don't feel great about that just yeah. so that we maintain a positive relationship with them. So, good point. Um, if you want, I would be happy to follow up with Dan on this specific item since you have like a few balls in the air with him That'd and be I've yeah, been out would. to the property and, you know, went on the site visit and yeah, if you're willing to do that, that'd be super. Yeah. And that way it's not, you know, you don't have to touch base with him on four different projects, <laughs> just three. And I can touch base with him on this one and hopefully keep it yeah. separate and less Sounds confusing. Yep. So I will do that and just see if he plans to talk to the landowner or well, I think if you put it in that context that, you know, we want to keep this positive relationship with El Chip and it doesn't feel great to leave it hanging yeah. for a year. Yeah. So, okay. And I like the way you worded it. Is it yeah. no movement or no contact? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I, well, I have my suspicions, but I will leave it at that. Um... The project number 39, uh, which we talked about last time, which uh, is that parcel near the school and near um, Freeze's Pond, uh, the landowner of which I think we said lives in Connecticut or Massachusetts. I have not had a chance to reach out to them, so that's just a to-do item on my list that will happen one of these days. If you find you need help, just pass it on. All right, do that. Um, wetland buffers. We keep this on our list as a placeholder. I, my, if, if I recall, Judy, at the last meeting, we decided that we really needed more information from Sylvia. And I don't know if you've heard anything from her. Mm -mm. Did you reach out to her I, or? I can't remember. Okay. <laughs> Because um, I think you were going to reach out to her yeah, and ask. And asked her. I, I, you I to just check I'll have back to double and, check okay. and see whether I actually did it or not. Okay. It seems like forever ago. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, and if not, maybe you could do that this time yeah. around, and we can just see um, if she had. I think we wanted some proposed language or some sample language. Yeah, I think we were we were looking to see whether whether DCC was supposed to actually uh, word do the write the warrant or just offer suggestions or what exactly what. Yeah, and, the, and does more that technically what was was right. DCC's role? Right. And does that look like a revision of the whole ordinance, or just an, yeah. add, an addition, an added section, or you know, I don't know. I remember writing it yeah. out in the minutes, but I can't remember whether I actually converted that into an email to her. Oh. So well, I'll, I'll double check on that. You usually follow through, so I'm guessing you did. But mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. not, uh, there's been a lot going on. Yes. So. <laughs> Hey, uh, look possible. at all the balls I've dropped yes. in the last month. So there's yeah. no judgment here. Just checking Thank in. Um, okay, so we'll um, see if we can get some more feedback from Sylvia so we can move that forward. Yeah, we were supposed to have language by June. Was, well, I think it's the, again, you know, first. we have all of these different yeah. things, options, but it's hard to know exactly what it is that we need to yeah. be doing. I will say I had my husband <coughs> review the, who's a wetland scientist, review the existing ordinance, and he suggested some changes, some things that just really need updating mm -hmm. for the, you know, their reference old definitions or old guides or, um, you know, so he had some suggestions just on things that could generally be updated that I'm happy to share, you know, maybe via email with the group and mm -hmm. Sylvia to get her thoughts. But that doesn't address the, you know, that we're currently lacking a wetland buffer and would need to start from scratch on that. So, did he have any recommendations yeah, on that? Yeah, he really likes the town of Amherst. They have um, individual, they have basically every wetland that would be impacted um, is assessed for its function and values mm -hmm. using the New Hampshire method, which is like a standardized wetland assessment tool. Um, and, um, so depending on that particular wetlands function and values, it's either a buffer of zero, 25, 50, or 100 feet. And so to me, that sounds very complicated, but you know, he's coming from a consultant's perspective. And so I'm sure there's other perspectives to get on how easy that is to manage. Yeah, who makes that determination? The wet, a, wetland, a licensed wetland scientist. So, okay. and I said, well, doesn't that put a lot of responsibility on the landowner who they then have to hire a professional if they, and he said, well, that landowner always has the option of not doing something within, like within a hundred feet. If they're staying a hundred feet from any known wetland, then they don't have to worry about it. But if they want to do something within 100 feet of a known wetland, then it has to be assessed for its functions and values, and the buffer width is determined based on that. That's kind of an interesting way to do it because it actually makes it, it almost makes 100 feet the default yeah. unless someone wants to go right. to the trouble of, right. and, and the, yeah. And I think so. they have some exclusions for, you know, like barns are excluded. If they're for agricultural purposes, like that would be fine. That wouldn't require a buffer, you know. So I think there's, it's obviously a much longer ordinance than what I'm describing. But that was one example. He He's thrown that out there for a while to me. And I finally looked at it, so. <laughs> I like that also because instead of making a blanket statement about every wetland, it takes into account the reality of each one. And um, I, I like that relative to uh, just, you know, saying 100 feet or 50 feet. And well, I think there is some it incentive. it sounds arbitrary that way. There is some incentive for people just to, avoid. to avoid that yeah. by staying 100 feet yeah. or further away. It, it's so. almost like that situation we had with um, that landowner on Ridge Road or Range Road, whichever one who was doing that, you know, wanted a permit to be able to impact that stream for that stream crossing for their driveway. And, you know, that consultant ended up coming back. We suggested a box culvert, and mm. he ended up coming back and saying, like, I looked at that, and actually, you know, by doing some concrete buttresses in the upland, we were able to avoid the permitting process altogether. So, like, avoidance yeah, really yeah. is the best mm. um, protection mechanism. So I think, you know, we maybe I'll, I'll send around Amherst maybe. We could all take a look at it yeah. and have something to react to at least. And then he was going to try and dig up a couple other ones that he thought, you know, I asked him what ones are not complicated for you from a consultant standpoint, but also feel protective of the natural resource. So, Well, I think that right there has kind of moved us ahead because here we, we have a professional wetland scientist who's 
who's dealt with these with these ordinances, right? And yep. and has a recommendation. So I think that kind of goes a long way to helping us. And so, yeah. um, and you said he had some other potential changes, just tweaks to the ordinance. So are you willing to type those up and copy Sylvia? Yeah, I'll type And up. include the Amherst mm -hmm. um, uh, example and, and maybe tell her, and get her that, the, yeah, get her that we find this really interesting. This yeah. is a really interesting idea and what does she think? Yeah, I think, again, my only concern, and I asked my husband this, you know, is does it put a lot of burden on a private landowner who, say, did map their wetlands 10 years ago, you know, when they were building their house or something, and now they want to put in a new structure, and all of a sudden they're having to rehire a consultant, pay more money in order to get that functions and values assessment done. And he was like, well, they just can put it outside 100 feet of those known wetlands that they mapped 10 years ago. So I think it is, you know, that was my only hit, like question immediately off the bat, and it seems like it's for most not cases, a huge hurdle. Hundred feet just doesn't seem so yeah. onerous. I mean, yeah. unless you have a very small lot. But um, right. So I'm trying to think here. Rather than, does it make sense rather than have Judy contact Sylvia and you contact Sylvia? Do you want to? What? So what were you going to ask, um, Judy? I was, can we I just was pretty much going to just just the reiterate process. what was in the? Yeah. Can we just? Minutes. Can you just add that to your message, yeah, I'll take Haley? Care of that, so. Too. I guess what's the process and are we revising the existing ordinance or are we starting over and if we're revising the existing ordinance here's some ideas that um, a wetland scientist suggested and also here's an example that we like great and what do you think okay if That's I awesome. um Haley I feel like we made significant well, progress yeah. in three minutes <laughs> if, if um if I'll, I'll when I get home I'll take a look and see if I did email her okay and then I'll I'll forward the email great. to you in Go from there. Yeah, I'll let you know one way or the other. Okay, sounds good. Because I feel like we were a little stuck, so that's great. Yeah, it'll always be something to look at, I guess, which is more than we've had. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Okay, so I think we can go ahead and do our minutes approval, and then we're going to um, leave the financial report until Eric gets here. <laughs> um, so I'm going to make a motion that we approve the March 11th regular meeting minutes. Is March 11th. Oh, April 15th. Did I send the wrong minutes around again? Well, it just says March just, 11th. I don't, just don't think you changed the date. You're fine. I have it. It's just on the, oh, on on the, the agenda. Oh, on the agenda. Sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yes, April 15th. Tax day. Um... I'll second. Okay. Any discussion or edits? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> Super. So we're going to skip over fin the finance report for now. Um, there's a note here, Brian, that you're going to give an update on the Bear Brook Steering Committee. Yes, the next... Um, I actually missed the first meeting because of work. So I quit that job <laughs> and got another job. Um, That's commitment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it was time. So. Um, Seriously, you quit your job? I did. Yes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big change. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so Bear Brook Steering Committee. The next meeting is June twenty seventh, and it's going to be for a public hearing. And on the Bear Brook website, they have um, the old management plan from ninety four, the Nash Stream management plan as well as the Pisgah management plan as examples and they have a presentation a PowerPoint presentation listed there as well and pretty much that's all the information you know they have their steering committee members the chair and the vice chair listed as well and that's pretty much um, the extent of the information I've contacted Will uh, Ginn G-U-I-N his name is and he's out until May 20th because I just wanted to confirm that you know, we had the April 29th meeting, and then the next meeting is June 27th. That seems like a long spread. Mm. Um, so I'm going to just call his office tomorrow and just confirm that there isn't a meeting this month for the steering committee. Yep. But they have um, a full committee. They have their chair, vice chair, uh, resources available, and public hearing for June 27th. And I think, so the Board of Selectmen asked for a... Uh, 
a nomination and I sent your name to mm -hmm. the Board of Selectmen. So did they, I guess they acted on that? They did. Okay. Yes. So you're an yeah, official. Yeah, they sent my name okay. to um, the steering committee and okay. they accepted. So they have a full committee now. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Uh, the next item on the list is um, the bio blitz. So this is as a reminder, um, cooperative extension, I guess, I think. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Me. <laughs> yes, yeah. Haley. Um, so cooperative extension is providing assistance to two towns, or they will be selecting two towns to provide assistance for a bio blitz on a town owned property. And I think I mentioned that I had talked with Kelly Hughes, who is the middle school teacher at the school here in town at Deerfield Community School, and she is was interested in um, coordinating on something like this because next year for her for for, th for seventh and eighth grade science she will be kind of doing something or would like to do something similar to what Ellen O'Donnell did last year, um, and so I did put an application in. Uh, for the Conservation Commission to partner with Kelly on the bio blitz that would involve her seventh and eighth grade students. But as I understand, there has been great interest in this program, and so we will see what the selection committee decides. So, <laughs> with no favoritism involved. No. Yes, <laughs> no. We wouldn't want that. Yeah, you know, I'll just say from wearing that hat that. Um, yeah, we've had like over 60 applica That's applications. Great. It's great. It's more than a quarter of New Hampshire town. I mean, it's just yeah, crazy. Super. So um, it's great. We're, we have the capacity to help two towns this year and then four in each of the coming two years. Um, so even if it doesn't happen this fall, it might happen in the future. Yeah. So. No, I mean, that's so, that shows a lot of, a yeah, lot of interest. That's so that's really, yeah. that's really great. Good justification for future yeah. grant funding. Yeah. <laughs> so that's just an update on where that's at. Um, when do they make the decision? The application deadline ends May 15th, which is in two days. And then um, we have a new staff person starting on the very beginning of June, and that will kind of kickstart our selection process. So mid-June, people should hear back. There's a bullet here for the Lamprey River Advisory Committee. I think this was just around the Community Grants Program, I assume. Judy, that you just put this here to remind us that that's out there. Well, everyone was going to just kind of put yeah. on their thinking caps and see if there was anything, any any projects hey, that they might feel were Good. How are you? appropriate. Good. Hey, Eric. Hi. Hi. Okay. Evening. Sorry, I'm late. Eric, Maurice. You're last up, and then we're done. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> but we are we're, we are zipping along, so we're not going to be long, I think. Cool. So, so anyway, I don't know if anyone has any co uh, any thoughts on that grants program. I don't, but if anyone else does, happy to hear it. Okay, so we can just leave that there and to remind us, I guess. Um, stewardship and easement monitoring. Um, that's still, I think we're still waiting for spring, basically. Um, Will and Al are on the Great Brook parcel as soon as they get out there. Um, we're still trying to get in touch with the landowner of the Curry Duchano piece, and Frank is making arrangements for the K. Williams easement and I will follow up with him because I haven't actually heard from him about that recently so I'll just see what yeah he was going to send me uh, an available date and then I was going to contact the landowner and I haven't heard from him yet so um Eric are you, do you want to do the, do you want to jump in and do the financial sure, sure. finance report now or do you want to wait? <clears throat> I'll do it right now. It's not very long. Um, I have an unofficial version of the end of April, April 30, balance in the conservation fund. I know it's incorrect. I'll explain that in a second. 
So the balance um, at the end of April was 187,543.66, and we brought in the, the credits this month or in April were $38.53 to arrive at that balance. Um, I received a, at home, it was mailed to me, the check for the last conservation fund, which is the April check. The land you know, use change tax? Right. And usually what happens, the way the process has worked until April, <clears throat> is the, um, the clerk makes out, you know, determines what the land use change tax is, splits it in half, sends a check over to the other side of the house, and they deposit it in the conservation fund. Okay. That always happens. In April, it came to my house, just a check. So I sent it back, I sent it to uh, the town administrator, and he said he would have it deposited properly. Eric, you could have made a few cool thousand and no one would ever have known. Uh, it was three, th it was, uh, so just deposit it into your dollars. checking account. <laughs> yeah, well. How does that happen? That's so strange, but anyway. Well, uh, I'm not going to try and figure that out. There's things happening that we don't know about. So uh, the check has not been deposited yet. I suspect it may be deposited in another account, so we'll have to find that out, and I'll, I just discovered that today when I looked for it. So the other note I would make in the minutes, please, is that we have had only one official report for the conservation fund this year, and that was the end of January. The next three months were all, are all unofficial because they were not prepared by the treasurer, which is part of the treasurer's responsibility. So we are traveling without assurance, and we know April is incorrect because that check wasn't in there. So. So maybe this is something, Eric, to put on our next, um, or at least for me to discuss at our next Board of Selectmen quarterly update. Yeah, that would be good. I, I'd like to talk with you sometime. Just, I have an idea here, and I think okay. it's probably the only one. Uh, well, it's, I think it would work if, this, if we could get some support from the select board because <clears throat> How many years has it been that we haven't had an effective process? Yeah. Um, so I think the way to do it is to change the process. And with, there's a way to do it Okay. Uh, under the RSAs. So. Okay. So I don't know, Judy, if you, I know you kind of keep a running tally of things to report to the Board of Selectmen. So maybe add that to that list. I think I was just there recently, so I'll be going again and maybe, uh, let's see, we're in May. Maybe July I'll be going in for my next one. So it won't be, it won't be immediately, mm -hmm. but. Well, we haven't suffered too much so far, so a yeah. couple more months. Well, you know, I mean, someone does have to keep tabs, and you're, you're apparently doing that, which is great, but we wouldn't Well, have it's not the official, I, you know. And I'm yeah, but we wouldn't have known, for example, that our land use change tax, number one, had been milled to the wrong location and hadn't yet been deposited into the right account if we just relied on the right. treasurer to right. give us official reports. Mm -hmm. Right. So... So that's it. So, Eric, um, right before the meeting, you probably haven't had a chance to see it yet, but I sent you invoices that I just got from Dan today for, um, oh, I didn't, I could already close that already, for Matthews. Hang on Matthews, a second. Boys for it oh. Matthews, Matthews, and, and Boysford. The two Matthews and Boysford. Do you want to deal with those tonight, or do you want to take these and look at them and do that next month? Well, um, it seems like... Uh, I think Dan was going to be mailing originals, I think he said. To me? Probably to well, here. Well, I, I mean, if we know the amounts... Yes, well, you, you've amounts. got copies of them online. No, I do. In okay. an email. Yeah. Well, well I mean, we could vote on it tonight. 
Would you like to do that? I just wasn't uh, sure what you wanted to do. Well, if, if the commission is supporting those amounts. Well, uh, why don't I hand that to you? Mm -hmm, okay. And behind uh, the two Matthews, well, actually behind each of the, there, each packet is, there's one packet for each. Uh, there's stuff in there that's not necessarily just the budget. Um, there's a copy, he sent the copy of the budget along with the invoice too. Okay. So just mm -hmm. the top, like top two, three copies of each packet there okay. pertains to the. So these the would have been in the, in the mail, these top? No, I printed those oh, you this, did. this evening. He just sent those via, via mail. Oh, 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 I see. Okay. By, via email oh, I see. this oh. afternoon, and I forwarded them to you, but probably you didn't, well, you didn't. Well, did the, did the whole batch come to me? Yeah. Okay, yep. so I can find the numbers there. Actually, actually what you got was, was the first few copies there, and, and the deeds were, t were also printed. I did not okay. print the entire deeds. Mm -hmm. That's all right. I'm all out right. of ink. So. <laughs> but everything's in your, e in your inbox. Okay. Now, have we all... Do we all agree that these numbers are correct? Is there actually, when, when you asked me if I would go back in time and try to pick up what yeah. is pending. And thank you for doing that. You're welcome. But I did, there was, I had nothing for Boysbert and there's $18,000 there. Well, that was, was that my first question. That's right on top. I thought that was, you know, that's been such a long time. It's yeah. actually 14,009. Well, I assume that's because we only just now closed on the easement. So, you know, normally they mm -hmm. don't, I don't, I think that they don't invoice us until the project is complete. And we've been right. sitting on that easement for so long mm -hmm. that. Um, the budget is attached to that too, just uh, the first two, three pages. Okay. Invoice and then budget. No, for, on the, each, yeah. each, each one of these invoices is, is a different. Mathis, Mathis, mm -hmm. and yep. Boyce Boyce, Fur, right. and then you've got budget. So just, that's one invoice on top here. Right, right. this that's is one invoice, on and then the budget is attached below. Right. Well, that. Okay, let's the, vote on these. these. Um, yeah, they've all got budgets. If all everybody's got ready to do that. We never had one for the Raymond Road. It was just the charge for the, uh, for the appraisal. The appraisal? Yeah. And that and was a... Was that a uh, one half or one? Yeah, yeah, we paid one half. Okay. Do you want to do each of those separately or do you want to do them all together? No, let's do them separately and then we know what numbers we're dealing with on individuals. Okay, do you want to make the motion, then? So, yeah, I will. The first one is uh, Boysvert, and that amount here is 14,943.57. Okay, so a motion to pay that invoice for the Boysford Town Forest Conservation Easement. West seconds that. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Let's look at uh, Mathis. Um, let's look at the appraisal first. Okay. So that is $2,400. Project appraisal, and this is for the. It'd be Raymond Road. Raymond Road, not, not North Road. Okay. Raymond Road appraisal twenty four hundred dollars. I'll second that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And finally, <coughs> Mathis. Um, 12,671.08. And I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We got okay, it. and that one came so much faster because that was a very quick turnaround on that, you know, mm -hmm. on that easement. That's been right. signed and that's a that's been signed and closed on. So that's that was, done. That's much less than we thought it was gonna be, correct? Mm -hmm. I, that's my recollection. It went down. Can... Yeah, it, it, he, he said it was going to, to go down for some reason. Yeah, well, it's good news. Yeah, yeah. that is good news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Let's get Except it. Except for the voice yeah, that we forgot, it we, that have we forgot it. about. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the voice has been pending for a, what, a couple of years. I mean, so it's so easy to. Oh, we, we had that uh, go around with yeah, the. I was going to say before yeah. I moved. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, you know, we, we can't be. We got stuck on the. Um, 
on the survey. Remember all that business? Yeah, yeah. So and you can't be expected. And then we to spend some time on yeah, yeah. Yeah. parking lots and. Yeah. Brothers. Oh, okay. That, that's right. That's for the that's for the bear paw easement down there. Okay. Yeah. That's so you that. might have to go back a lot further than you, yeah. Yeah. than you <laughs> expected, Judy, to, yeah. to find that. And probably with inflation, it went up a bit. <laughs> you mean like Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> okay. Great. Got some work done. Good. Yeah. So is that you're all set then, Eric? With yeah, I'll. I'll uh, just verify this from the numbers I have. Which, yep. And then uh, send the request for payment off to uh, the county department. Let's hope for the best. Okay, so in terms of um, permits and notifications, um, before we get to the Eversource things, which there are a list here. I'm going to jump down to the seasonal dock permit um, from Pamela English. So she contacted Judy, who put her in touch with me. This is, um, as I understand it, she's now being asked to submit a permit application to DES to put in her dock on Pleasant Lake, even though she's been doing that for 30 years. I decided that we didn't need to wait to, she was so, trying to get that done and submitted to DES, and so I just came down and signed it, thinking that if she's been doing it for 30 years, it's maybe mm -hmm. not something that we had yeah. to. We don't need to be the ones to hold it up. Yeah. <laughs> right. So that has been signed and sent on its, its way, hopefully. Um, then beyond that, it looks like we have, um, Shoreland permits by notification for a number for two Eversource projects, and it looks like in both cases um, they are revising. Well, in the first one, the impact, the total impact is 1,500 square feet, and it looks like in the second one they're actually revising the total square feet of impact. Oh no, sorry. No, this the, if this is a whole new. Okay. This is a whole I new misread, thing. I misread this. Sorry. The, this the amended the amended one is the one that they were here to present in the in the in you. Which I still have. And I keep board. forgetting to give you. That's all right because this is this takes its place now. It was amended. And it was reduced. Yeah. So okay, okay that's the one that's reduced. I'm yeah. sorry. So that's this number three. Reduced. That is reduction of temporary impacts from forty-seven thousand square feet to thirty-six thousand plus yeah. square feet so I knew there was a reduction in here somewhere I just had, <laughs> had the wrong one the other two are much smaller um, you can take it home the whole keep, collection. keep it company yeah. with the <laughs> <laughs> yeah pictures yeah so that's an amendment and then there are two new ones which are for replacement of utility structures along existing transmission lines one for a total impact of 1560 square feet and the second one actually much larger for an uh, impact, total square foot impact of 21,957. I believe from just reading reading through here, I believe one of them is, is, can, is actually Candia, affects Candia, and then the other one is Deerfield. Uh, Deerfield is the, um, the 21,000. The large one. And there's 100, which I don't know what that is, what's the 100 square feet of impervious? It's, uh, Total square feet of impact, 21,000. Total square feet of new impervious area, 100 square feet. And it's the replacement of select utility structures along the 391 of the 375 transmission lines located within the 150-foot and 250-foot protected shoreland zone of the Lamprey in Deerfield. Proposed impacts to the Lamprey regulated shoreland are as follows, 150 feet, dash 17,787 square feet, 250 feet, 4,170 4, square feet. Um, Do they say what the new, maybe the new impervious area is, so like a new pad or something? That, so concrete is going down? I didn't read the, the detail on it, but uh, it probably here we go. has some things in here. This project proposes an increase in impervious area.
Well, it doesn't say why. It just says here. there's going to be this increase back. in impervious area. Okay. And this is this is actually a permit by permit by notification. Yeah. So we don't. I think this is what's so an FYI. Yeah. I think so. <clears throat> yeah. I think I think with the utilities now, and again, I'd have to take a look at the at the. The regulations that you want to see this as we just got. Put some work in the right? Can you draft wet one rules? Um, I think, I think the, the PBNs now are, they're doing PBNs for, for utility maintenance. What's that, PBN? Per, per, by notification. Oh, okay. Um, here, Conservation Commission review role in permit by notification has been restored. So that's why we're getting it. So how yeah. long do we have to provide comments uh, if we want to? We'll require a signed statement from the Conservation Commission waiving the right to intervene to be eligible for a five-day review. The application is not signed by the Conservation Commission will be reviewed as a standard permit. So that standard permitting is, is 15 days to comment and uh, or well, 15 so days to, to send a comment. We may have already missed the five-day window depending on when the date on that is. Well, no, it's not a five-day window. That's if they want five-day review, we'd have to sign it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it says it gives us a standard permit. So yeah, w I guess what you're trying to say is that they missed the five-day review because it was not signed. That's if they want to expedite. If they want yeah. to expedite, that we have to sign. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the same yeah. as it was. So the other, the other way around, it's. Um, uh, yeah, it says if it's not signed, it will be reviewed as a standard, standard permit. permit. In which case, you've got 15 days to tell them that you're going to comment or that you're going to review it, and then you've got 30 days from from that from that time. And, and that's to tell DES that mm -hmm. we plan? Yeah, you get your, yeah. <coughs> Commission must provide written notification with 14, within 14, notification with 14 of filing date, oh, 14 days of filing date in order to investigate, and they must provide written report within 40 days of, the, of application filing. So you've got 14, 14 days to tell them we're going to look at it. Mm -hmm. And then you've got 40 days to look at to it. To look at it and to, <laughs> to send them a report. Why do you tell them you're going to look at it? We send a letter that says we're yeah. going to look at this? Yeah. Okay. This is the area they're talking about right here. Mm. Well, is, is it too late for this one? What was the filing date? <laughs> well, uh, see, I got that April. I think I wrote the, the date that I received <clears throat> Well, that. so it probably just go Up with the, the date. Yeah, just go with the date on the, on yeah, the letter. The, I think it was April 29th on that one or May 2nd, one of the two. Um, so I guess we're still within 14 days if someone wants to no, it's Raymond, no. <coughs> investigate, Raymond, provide comment. Oh, oh, right. oh, well, maybe it's all three, actually. I mean, do you, did you get the sense that that reduction, sure that impact to. reduction on the previous permit was because they'd gotten feedback and comments, or was it unrelated? I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. But it looks like they changed the route and. Oh, oh, you know, you know, there there was something. Part of I think there is something the there in the letter, possibly. Yeah. They, they went to the. They went to the they had a meeting board. with there the. Yeah, yeah, but it wasn't the meeting that that you that you did all the work on. No, no, no which is fine. It was another yeah. one. Beyond that, even. Right. Oh, they got a. They got a. RFI. They got a request for more information from DES. Okay. So then they must have had a meeting there, and that and that prompted them to make some changes. Well, that's good. I mean, I guess especially for the second one, you know, we could write a similar letter that just says, you know, it's it feels like a lot of a big impact to be so close to the shoreland area, and you know, we'd appreciate additional oversight and. Um, you know what we will probably get, and I have not been upstairs since Friday, I guess. Um, we, there may be a, a letter from the lamprey even. Right. 
in which case they kind of they kind of do the, the, yeah. the footwork, yeah. which is nice. Yeah. Well, do we have? I mean, we presumably have the original letter. It could just be modified for it's this one. Project. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering, and maybe just amended with some of that information if we have it from LRAC. So who do you, who's the keeper of that letter? I've got it on my computer. My email okay. Somewhere, yeah. I don't know. So send the amended letter and. Uh, I don't remember. Did you mail that out? Or did, no, I don't think I mailed it out. Did you? You mailed that? I sent it. You mail. I've never mailed anything. I just sent it okay. to you. So in theory, you mailed. Or did it you out. email? Or did you email it to them? I don't remember. I can't. That's right. I emailed it to I you. Can't yeah. Much of yeah. anything these days. I've got a question. It, do we know anything about what, uh, can, how Candy is going to be involved here, or Raymond? It looks like Raymond's part of it too, at least according to the map. Well, the Candia one is very small. The total square foot of feet of impact is fifteen hundred square feet. Oh, okay. It's the Deerfield one that's very large. <clears throat> Deerfield or Raymond? The Deerfield, you mean above the? It shows. Deer... Well, are you looking at the first one or the second? I'm one? looking at. Uh, Darlene Forrest, Forrest Charlene Expecto. This is uh, 391 and 373 transmission lines. Okay, so that's the Candia one, which has very limited impact. Look at the 391, 375. Oh, okay. I'm not looking. This one also has Raymond impact, I think. But the, the imp impact, <laughs> it says, is uh, along the Lamprey and Candia. Okay, well. That's where they drew the block. Three ninety one, three seventy five is no, nope. no. This is that big. Remember the big project? Oh, the one that we have been. Yeah. Do you know where the other one is, Judy? Is that sitting in front of Wes? The other. No, this is this is three ninety one. I think they're the same thing. I think they're the same one. I think it's just three ninety one and three seventy. Both, both of the so permits are, are, are in there. They're paid to type of them. Okay. I think there's just two different permits, one for Candia, yeah. one, one for the impact in Candia. But one they're for together the in that same packet. Oh, they're together? They're, they're together. Oh, 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 it's, oh, yeah, it's one right. packet. Oh, here's, right. here's the first permit. Excellent. Don't well, take the paper be. clip off. I will I'll hold it. <laughs> and this, is this, this was the second. Is there another map or is this This map? is the second permit here. I had them separated, so you can... I was just questioning the map and, and oh. that all three towns seem to be involved, but all right. we're doing our share. I just thought it might be worth joining together and having a louder voice if we made sense. Okay. Well, Judy, you'll probably check the mail in the next couple of days, and you can let us know if, if the Lamprey River Watershed Association has submitted a letter. Because you're suggesting we would get a copy mm -hmm. of that. Uh, yeah, they, that's what they did the last time. And we have 14 days past the third, did you say? Was that the third? Um, what's the date of the application? Is, is that the May 2nd or is that April 20th? The letter is May 3rd. Oh, the application. The application. Hmm. 14, 14 days, days of filing date. Of the filing date. Yeah, I don't know how we would have the filing date. Maybe you know, the, here it is, 5 you see the two, by the where he signature? signs. He May, signed it on 5 2, but the letter's dated May 3. May 3rd. Yeah. And this is the submission packet. And so I didn't get it until May 3rd. whenever. May 3rd. So we'd have to send something out in the next four days. Or it, say we're going to send something out. Yeah. <laughs> Express the intent then to, yes. to review. So maybe yes, Judy, maybe you can just see. That. Maybe you can just huh? see where we sent the, the thing, Ryan, the letter to last yes, time, and then you. then Haley or I can send a letter, uh, a letter of intent to to respond, <laughs> or whatever they call it. Investigate, I guess. Notification for uh, just written notification of the investigate a permanent. You uh, just intent to email. investigate. I think we could just send an email. Yeah, so if you have the address to where we sent the last one, we can just send an email. Well, there's a, there's, on the bottom of the application, 
We're talking about the that one. That one. Yep. This one is done. Yep. And I will try and bring that paperwork back, Judy. Um, <clears throat> it would be uh, Wetlands Bureau, Hazen Drive. www.des.nh.gov. Say that again. Um, des.nh.gov. But doesn't it go to a specific person? I don't want to send a random email well, to um, uh, you here. Well, you can send it to Darlene, Darlene Forrest, but she's not, I don't think she's in Concord. I think she's elsewhere. Or no, maybe she yeah, is. Yeah, she's on Hazen Drive. Okay, she is, okay. Is her email there? Where is signature? I don't see it. If there's a New Hampshire State Employees Directory where you can just look it up by last name. Okay. What's her name? Darlene? Darlene. D-A-R-L-E-N-E. -E Forced. F-O-R-S-T. And if we're, Kate were here, she knows Darlene. <laughs> of course. Okay. I'll just, maybe I can just look at that. Or you can, if you, uh, yeah, I'll just look at that before Probably I go. Probably deforced at <laughs> <laughs> I will send Ms. Forst um, just an email saying that we plan to investigate. And uh, excellent, thanks. And then we have 40 days, right, to, to actually do that? Yeah. She's probably on the website, too. Uh, Haley just found it. Okay. Commissions must provide written notification with 14, within 14 days of filing in order to investigate, and then we provide a written report within 40 days. So I'll just send her an email saying that we're planning to do that, and then we can just dig up that other letter and revise it and send it along to her. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. So, the, so this is just <coughs> going to be to comply, and then we send the letter within mm -hmm. the 40-day mm -hmm. window. Yes. Okay. Did you want to look at this? One? Yes. Thank you. <coughs> Presumably, I reference file number up here. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just when I send it, I would just reference oh. this file number. Yeah, if that's yeah, that's the one. Okay. Okie dokie. Okay, um, but I've never seen them written like that, and I, I was kind of thinking that it's some might it might even be. I mean that that was from the applicant mm. to Darlene Forrest, so I'm right. I'm a little. That's fine. Right. I'll look at that number. before I go and just make sure I've got the right numbers and everything. Because yeah. the DES usually the file numbers are 2018, 2019. Dash mm -hmm. and numerical. Okay. Unless the shoreland things are different. Um, we're still on notifications and whatnot. So we have a <coughs> notification of a proposed timber harvest of 2,423 acres of Bear Brook State Park. This is through um, Division of Forest and Lands, the New Hampshire Department of Natural and Cultural Resources. It's like Bidding it's summer 2019. So the, that's I, the map. The one is on the other side, and that's the map. It looks like so down south. An road. FYI. Where did you say it was? Looks like it's all down South Road. That's what I thought. I thought I saw the map. Mm. How many acres are I going to cut? Well, that's or very interesting. That, that's this the, says... <laughs> that must be the whole park, right? Yeah, this says 240, 242, and here it's... Oh, so maybe this is just a typo. It's 242, according to the oh, letter. Okay. 242 acres. Oh, hmm. really? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was kind of high. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote it. Like the whole yeah, park. It's planting a timber <laughs> harvest of 242 acres of Bear Brook State Park in the town of Deerfield. Uneven aged management in the form of group selection and single tree selection will be used to create a diversity of tree sizes and ages and to provide wildlife habitat. 
a location map is on the back. It will require transportation of forest products over town roads. Mark Young, the town agent, will be contacted. We are in the early stages of planning this harvest, which will be offered for public bidding during summer 2019. At that time, you will be notified as to the timber volume and the successful bid bidder who will be responsible for the timber tax. I think that's an FYI. So the town is getting timber tax for timber on Deerbrook? If it's in Deerfield, I guess. No, they, they pay a timber tax. The town doesn't get timber tax. Well, they get a timber, well, yeah, they do. They get a timber tax from the logger. Get a timber tax. Yeah. Right. Yes. Don't, we will, don't right. pay a timber right. tax. Yes. No, yeah. We right. will be well, getting, based, yeah, we will based be getting money. Mm -hmm. right. Where does that, where does timber tax money go? Into the forestry committee fund, which is. Management. Or the well, no, um, it's not a town forest. Oh. If it's is a that town just, forest, is that just it has for to go into the maintenance fund, so. It goes to the town then. I guess it's gonna go into the general fund. In this case, I guess. Unless we can influence them otherwise. <laughs> oh, so it's just below my house. Well, where it's starting because I'm right here. Yeah, I wonder if they'd come over. I got a couple of trees I need. <laughs> <laughs> they might be taking those out and, as well as Just some of the get others. In there, right. you go. So that's right below. This is by this that's must right be that middle road. Th no, this is where the um, I, I bet this is where the fence company is. You know, where the mm -hmm. where the oh, trail Q, is. Yes. Q fence. Oh, yeah, because yeah. that's right where that trail starts. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Um, and one last notification, we received a shoreland impact permit um, for 33 Hammond Road on Freezes Pond, map 208, lot 35. The impact is 675 square feet of protected shoreland in order to construct a 440, 440 square foot addition to the existing primary structure. Do you have that? I do. Somewhere? Mm. <laughs> That's the James Smith. Yeah, isn't it? Down here, there's a pot. Mm -hmm. Tin pan. Or that must be Tin Pan Allen. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's all pine. Well, this has already been issued. Mm -hmm. I mean, so this is just an FYI. This permit has already been issued again we didn't get the initial application because we're not getting those anymore so this has been issued and it will impact 675 square feet of protected shoreland to construct a 440 square foot addition I'm surprised well maybe it's further down so I think there's not much we have to say about that Fence company down to the campground mm. it's like totally different okay really but if anyone would like to see it, oh, here that is. <clears throat> were you going to take this with you, Haley? Oh, if you, if if, if your other one's lonely, I'm going to bring that one back. <laughs> I made myself a note. I don't even remember you, you had it. So do you don't you don't need to look at that though. I mean, okay. I think it's just a notification, it's right? Got so. a company. It's good. It's, it's a reduction. reduction. A yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was actually a long list of notifications. I think we're done with that. Over two hundred. Um, unless people have questions yeah. or comments. That's the only other. I think the only one we're acting on is the first ever source permit, which we've already discussed. Um, so moving on to announcements, there's just one here. Um, I suppose you got this. Is that this? Yeah, it was in our box. So we have uh, an announcement. We have a correspondence from the New Hampshire Lakes Congress. Uh, there is a meeting on Thursday and Friday, May 30th and May 31st in Meredith, New Hampshire. So the Lakes Congress, working for clean and healthy lakes. If anyone would like to learn more about this.
the keynote address will be Voices of the Land presented by Eric Eckel, owner of Water Words That Work. And then there are a number of other sessions uh, on Friday. And that's all I've got. Does anyone else have other announcements or correspondence or reminders? I have an announcement. We're in turtle, cro turtle road crossing oh, season. You know goodness. that? I saw an enormous turtle Out here, that got smushed. On 107? I saw one right after the power lines. It was on. And it was on. A snapper? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've heard a few people. There was like some traffic jams right there with some big snappers. So they're. Uh, it was, uh, and it was halfway across the line yeah. of the road. Yeah. I, so, so I have a couple of pictures, and I was wondering. We're missing Kate and her little articles. <laughs> maybe we could still, maybe she'd be willing to still write for us. Hmm. Well, well, I mean, are there other hot spots in town? Because that seems to be one. There's oh, one yeah. on South Road near that the fishing game. Mm. All uh, over Wetland town. Reserve. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, yeah. yes, it's a town right. with a lot of turtle habitat. But, you know, other towns have put up turtle crossing signs, which, mm. you know, for whether or not they work, you know, they, they're an educational yeah. tool as That's much right. as they are like a notification tool. So maybe that would be something to ask um, for from funding for from this community grant. Oh. That's just an idea. I mean, it doesn't, it's not necessarily river focused, but it's within the watershed, Red, Red, watershed Red, focus. Education. They yeah. go in the rivers. <laughs> Where on South Road is there fishing? There's that fishing game like wetland easement wetland reserve Are, brown you, do you sign. mean oh you mean do you mean on on uh uh on um like near mount delight no ne oh. past deerfield leathers like past the turn okay. for deerfield right there is like oh that's big. there's a little there's a little conservation yeah. thing i keep trying yeah to, it's like just this little this i don't know it's someone donated it it's like a cute little parcel but um i don't know how big it actually is it's not very big but i've seen spotted turtles there and they're there's threatened. spotted turtles there and they're threatened so there's, that's something to... Where is this, on South Road? Mm -hmm. oh. So are you suggesting, Eric, that we, you know, because so Kate used to write, for those of you that may not know this, it's been a little while since we were doing this, but when the com before the communicator stopped and then restarted again, Kate was writing every month, she would write a little something from the Conservation right. Commission and the communicator. I'll write something. Sure. That'd be you great. Know. I love turtles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they smashed in the road. This, uh, the one I saw was <clears throat> enormous, and oh. it was so sad. Oh, yeah. It was really sad. I can send you that if, you, if it would be helpful to, as a picture. Shock. Uh, yeah. Shock I think we all get the image. Yeah. Send it to me anyways. <laughs> shock value. So the communicator just came out. I don't know. I guess it's coming out once a month. It's Is once that... a month now, yeah. So you just need to contact. I don't even know who you contact, but you I can find out. And yeah. then just they usually have a few day, you know, they have a mm -hmm. deadline. And yeah. Um, but if you want to put something in about turtles and. Is this the time of year for turtles to be on the move? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. I'll send you. Nesting. I'll send you a brochure. Well, so it's specific. Fishing game, or, uh, they must have something. Yeah, we extension mm -hmm. and fishing game has a brochure. Yeah, you don't have to. I mean, if you want to send me something, but yeah, I can okay. quickly find the Thanks. what I need to write yeah. an article. Go for it. And if you submit that to the communicator mm -hmm. and you send it to me, I could also, or I guess I don't know if you're on the, you know, we could post it on the town Facebook page too. Yeah. I guess is what I'm thinking because there are a lot of people on that Facebook page now, and that maybe people read that more readily than the communicator. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah. Just, a, just a suggestion. I'd like to see it on the town website, uh, not just it, but information. I've been trying to talk to a couple of selectmen from time to time. People don't know what's happening in town, it, it seems to me, in a lot of ways. Uh, they, there's, so if there was some central place, and uh, that's not easy because it's going to take somebody to manage it, to put it together. But well, I think some people think the communicator is a central place. Some people think it's the forum, and some people think yeah. it's the town Facebook page. And so we have, you know, some people collectively together. You know, it's one kind of place. subsets of people check or see each of those different mm -hmm. different things depending on your your mo, I guess. So, um, but you know, the Facebook page has. I mean, I don't know how many people check it regularly, but it has several thousand. People. What's the name of that? Is that the community page? Uh, dear, yeah, Deerfield oh, Community okay. Page, I think. Well. So, 
that's you know one possibility mm -hmm. there's yeah anyway um okay that sounds great thanks brian for you writing bet. about Thank turtles you. i hope not to see too many more smashed in the road but no. um, yeah it's terrible let's see they may have an extended season as cold yeah, as it it's is. It's been a rough year for them, for all, all of the critters. Yeah. Mm. Why has it been a rough year? It's been a slow start to the season. Mm. It's like for salamanders and frogs, and mm. it's just it's tricky it's for cold. them to deal with cold and warm and cold and warm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because all of us, including us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I kind of like the weather. Hmm. Not like super hot. The black flies aren't out bad. Well, you can get, get out early enough. That's true. Cool, I'm wondering if can, the black flies are going to no wait and come out. You know, yeah. they usually mm -hmm. are here from May 1st to May 15th, and then they're gone. And now they haven't come out yet. So oh, do they've I have, been they out. have been out. out. <laughs> only been on out. the only on the warm days, though. Yeah. Oh. I was trying to rake this morning, and I, they were just swarming, yeah. biting like crazy. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're in, oh, getting my car too. I guess so. But this afternoon when it was cloudy, they weren't out. So I guess that's, yeah, well, that's a bunch of them this week. the good thing. But I'm just wondering if they're going to have an extended season once it gets sunny and warm. Yeah. Anyway. I'm in the checks. Maybe they'll eat each other. Um, anything, anyone have anything else? Adjourn? Yes, please. Thank you. Any, uh, so we have, I second it. All in favor? Aye. I'm assuming there are no opposed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's that that? I never, I never put down. Mm -hmm. No, no, next it's Monday. A, a motion. I always put it to chair. Oh, okay. Adjourn. I can just adjourn yeah. without a motion. Good. I hope it goes well. Yeah. Then I adjourn this meeting. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody. Thank for more you. important things. It's kind of nice, actually, to have a shorter meeting this week yeah. <laughs> or this month. <laughs> So you went to a workshop or you're leading a workshop? We lead a workshop from Wednesday through Saturday. Where is that? Overnight. Playing any instruments yeah. lately? No. Barely. I picked up the guitar once last year. Hancock. And what's I was the thinking about what you need. It's the coverage workshop. It's for landowners and huh? a lot of landowners and conservation commissioners, but and also other folks um, in that area. Yeah. Yeah. Play the piano? No, all over the state. <laughs> they come all over the state. Okay. They stay for I four think. days. And Learn about forest management and wildlife and habitat. And are you doing the bulk of it, or yeah. it's just it's, it's just <laughs> well, I bring in people so they don't just have to listen to me speak all the time. But so there are others. There are multiple yeah. speakers. Yeah, fish and game, Audubon, private consultants. But you need to make sure that it. Well, then yeah. So I only have three presentations, and then I and then I coordinate the whole thing. So it's. It's tiring. It's like I was a camp counselor when I was a teenager, and I was always like amazed that they, I was like, actually, they let like 16 year olds watch kids. And now that I do this as an adult, which is basically like camp counselor, like, I'm like, oh my God, it's so smart to have those be 16 year olds. Like, it's exhausting. Yeah. It's exhausting to be on for four hours a day. So, yeah. so I hope you have a nice season mm -hmm. exchange. It's a lovely idea. And next year, I hope to participate. Yeah. Uh, we'll see what the weather's you like. Yeah, that's true. Um, I know. But yeah, it's. Hopefully a new Carbon. annual event. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is this the first one? Well, it's, a, it's been going on forever. Yeah. Um, Al that has done it for years, and this is, and then he retired from it last year and said it was going to stop, and so we volunteered to keep it going. Who's Barbara? Have I met her? You know, I don't know. I yeah, I don't know if you've yeah. met her. She just she I guess she had volunteered independently of us, and then Al said, "Why don't you guys work together?" Yeah. So we just agreed to host it if she sent out the invitation. That used to be run by. <laughs> but it's funny. I am an announcer from there was from North. I mean, if it's oh, no, it's, it's good. I thought that's no. what I figured that it was a collaborative effort. No, but other people are saying yeah, like other people who know you well. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I don't know. If it's at your house, why aren't you sitting in the end? Anyway, no, well, right. um, don't if you don't have Steve. to. So. Steve Kerr. All right. yeah, Steve Kerwood. Good night, everyone. See you, Haley. Take care. Take care. Good night. Um, um, Steve Kerr? Well, Steve been, Kerwood. Steve Kerwood, but he's, yeah. he's been a uh, nanny here, too. I just want to say. Remember somebody in Barrapa knew him. Are we off? Oh, but no, we're not. Off, so. Still going. <laughs> All the traveling uh, tourist traffic.